In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to this great celebration of the Epiphany, the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles, that is, brothers and sisters, to us, to us. We celebrate Christ's coming to us in a personal and a community, an ecclesial way. First, as we ponder this mystery, we call to mind our sins. For the grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We sing the Christmas Gloria for the last time this year. Glory be to God in heaven and to all his people peace Heavenly King, Almighty Father May our worship never cease Gloria in excelsis Deo, Gloria in excelsis Oh, 
Son of God, the Father, merciful beyond compare, all our sin by you forgiven, Lamb of God, receive our prayer, Lord. by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. reading from the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine out, Jerusalem, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising on you, though night still covers the earth and darkness the peoples. Above you the Lord now rises, and above you his glory appears. The nations come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Lift up your eyes and look around. All are assembling and coming towards you. Your sons from far away and daughters being tenderly carried. At this sight, you will grow radiant, your heart throbbing and full since the riches of the sea will flow to you, the wealth of the nations come to you. Camels in throngs will cover you, and dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. Everyone in Sheba will come, bringing gold and incense, and singing the praises of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, All nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. All nations shall fall prostrate before before you, you, O Lord. Lord. O God, give your judgment to the king, to a king's son your justice, that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. 
all nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. In his days, justice shall flourish and peace till the moon fails. He shall rule from sea to sea, from the great river to earth's bounds. All, all nations, nations shall, shall fall, fall prostrate, prostrate before, before you, you, O Lord. Lord. The kings of Taradish and the sea coasts shall pay you tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring you gifts. Before him, all kings shall fall prostrate. All, all nations, nations shall, shall fall prostrate before, before you, you O Lord. Lord. For he shall save the poor when they cry and the needy who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak and save the lives of the poor. All, All nations, nations shall, shall fall prostrate, prostrate before, before you, O Lord. Lord. reading from the letter to the Ephesians. You have surely heard the way in which God entrusted me with the grace he gave me for your sake. He made known to me by a revelation the mystery I have just described briefly. This mystery, as it is now revealed in the spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, was unknown to humanity in previous generations that the Gentiles now have the same inheritance and form the same body and enjoy the same promise in Jesus Christ through the gospel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I see God cleanse my heart and my lips that I may worthy you proclaim your holiness. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory full of grace and truth. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After Jesus had been born at Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod, some wise men came to Jerusalem from the east. Where is the infant king of the Jews? they asked. We saw his star as it rose and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was perturbed. And so was the whole of Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people and inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. At Bethlehem, in Judea, they told him. For this is what the prophet wrote, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, for out of you will come a leader who will shepherd my people Israel? Then Herod summoned the wise men to see him privately. He asked them the exact date on which the star had appeared and sent them on to Bethlehem. Go and find out all about the child, he said, and when you've found him, let me know so that I too may go and do him homage. 
having listened to what the king had to say, they set out. And there, in front of them, was the star they had seen rising. It went forward and halted over the place where the child was. The sight of the star filled them with delight, and going into the house they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and falling to their knees, they did him homage. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. But they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod and return to their own country by a different way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. Will you uh, sit down? When I was a ten-year-old boy, I played the part of a king in my primary school nativity play with my friends Michael and Richard. Michael had his face and hands painted black and wore a turban. Richard had his face painted pale yellow and wore a hat that was a cross between a tea cosy and a small cushion with a little pom-pom on the top. I did not have my face painted, but I did wear a crown and had a sticky on beard. The person who oversaw the production was our head teacher, Miss Ricketts. She made her wishes about how we should approach our respective roles quite clear. Boys, she said, remember, you're all foreigners and you are to worship the baby Jesus like you would in your own countries. Now, turban-wearing Michael had to get down on his knees and then make his forehead touch the floor, at the same time sweeping his arms backward dramatically. Now, Richard, bless him, also had to fall on his knees and then complete the downward movement into a complete prostration with his face on the floor. I had to get down on my knees too, but stay kneeling, put my hands together, close my eyes and then bow deeply. You could spot I was sanctimonious even then. <laughs> the fact that I can remember the names and the teaching, after almost 60 years, testifies both to the faith and the teaching style of my head teacher, and how seriously the worship of Jesus was given to me as a child. Now, I just want you, please, to look up above my head. Like that, up there. Just look at it for a moment. There is Jesus dying on the cross, and this death is witnessed by his mother, Mary, and by John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. This same image 
in the same central high position has been in every church in which I have ministered. This is the prevailing image of our Western Catholic faith, the transcendent suffering Christ. Jesus, born at Bethlehem of the Virgin Mary, true God and true man, offering himself on the cross, a sinless, perfect sacrifice to redeem us from sin. This image of the suffering Christ, which has been with us for many, many centuries, has profoundly influenced Christian teaching and preaching even at the Epiphany. A well-known, and I have to say a well-worn approach to preaching a sermon at Epiphany, is focused on the gift of the wise men. Specifically the last one, myrrh, the strongly aromatic tree resin that will be used at the burial of Jesus. The gift of myrrh is, so to speak, said to anticipate the death of Jesus, leading us to conclude that, yes, Epiphany is about the child Jesus being shown to the whole world, represented in art and school nativities by the obviously diverse backgrounds of the three wise men. And it's also about earthly rulers, paying homage to the newborn king. But the primary purpose of Jesus coming into the world was to die, evidenced by the final gift he was given, myrrh. And this further is evidenced by the most common artistic image we're used to seeing in our churches, the suffering Christ. Now, unless you think I'm off my rocker or teaching you something different, let me tell you. Jesus did die for the sins of the human race. If it was God's plan that Jesus should come into the world to save sinners by his death, then yes, Jesus came into the world to die is obviously true. But that's not the whole teaching of Christianity and not the whole teaching of the Epiphany. Just briefly, let me take you back to the Gospel reading. When the wise men came to Jerusalem from the east, they asked, Where is the infant king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to do him homage. Herod wanted to be told when they had found him so that he too could go and do him homage. And towards the end of the reading, we have these words. The sight of the star filled them with delight, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and falling to their knees, they did him homage. Now, whilst you can, if you want to, turn the visit of the wise men and their gifts into something that looks forward to the death of Christ, Epiphany is much more about Jesus being shown to the world and the world, on seeing him, paying him homage. In our Western democracy, We are not used either to thinking about homage or actually doing it. It is true that when meeting a member of the royal family, we may bow or curtsy, but that's viewed as complying with the formal requirements of royal etiquette, of behaving respectfully towards them. It's not really considered homage. The only instance I can think of where homage is actually referred to as such in this country and as a required element of the proceedings is at a royal wedding, where the party who is joining the royal family on marriage 
is required on turning from the high altar after the final blessing to perform an act of homage to the reigning monarch. So homage, public homage, is very rarely seen. And as far as I can see, it's connected only with royalty. At the Epiphany, the wise men from the East traveled a long way to pay homage to the infant Jesus. Their gifts, though they attract attention, certainly from preachers, were quite incidental. Now, even if you have only been paying scant attention, you probably know what's coming next. Every day in this church, at this altar, the risen, crucified, ascended Christ comes to us at the Eucharist. And every day, God calls his people to come and pay homage, a thing that in our culture we do only to royals and the thing that the wise men did to a royal, the infant king of the Jews. God calls us publicly to acknowledge who Christ is and what he has done. So if you've not yet committed yourself to some resolution at the beginning of the year, consider coming to the Eucharist on a regular day in addition to Sunday to pay homage to the king, as the wise men did, to Jesus. Let us proclaim the faith we share. We believe in, in one God, God, the Father, Father the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of, of all that, that is seen, seen and unseen. We, we believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, God eternally begotten of, of the Father, Father God, God from God, God light from light, True God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, on, On the third, third day, day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for the coming of God's kingdom. Let us worship the Saviour with joy and make our prayer to our Heavenly Father. The Magi came from the East to worship your Son. 
Father, grant to Christians everywhere the spirit of adoration. May our lives shine as a witness to the saving grace you have given for all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The infant Christ received gifts of gold, incense and myrrh. Father, accept the offering of our hearts and minds. Empower us by your spirit and unite us in your Son, that all our joy and delight may be to serve you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. Father, grant an abundance of peace to your world. We pray especially for those many areas of the world where there is conflict and where the innocent are in danger. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The Holy Family lived in exile and in the shadow of death. Father, look in mercy on all who are poor and powerless and all who suffer. We ask for your comfort and healing power to bring hope to those in distress. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your son shared the life of his home and family at Nazareth. Father, protect in your love our neighbours, our families, and this community of which we are a part. May our love for all those with whom we come into contact be strengthened by your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we rejoice in our fellowship with the shepherds, the angels, the Magi, the Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, St. John, and all the faithful departed. We unite our prayers with theirs and ask for grace to serve you with joy. In your unfailing love for us and for all people, hear and answer our prayers through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Our Saviour, Christ, is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We offer each other a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. The offertory hymn is number 49. 49.
Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favour, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere. Mighty Creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory, made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the You are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice, made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice with praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of Mary the Virgin Mother of God, of St John the Evangelist, our patron, with the apostles, the martyrs and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and He taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety. As we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Lord God, the bright splendour whom the nations seek, may we who with the wise men have been drawn by your light discern the glory of your presence in your Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hymn number 48. 48.
So please sit down for a moment. Uh, first of all, a reminder that if you feel able uh, and safe, there are refreshments in the vicarage uh, straight after this Mass. Uh, thank you very much, Neil, for coming all the way from Cardiff to play the organ. He's coming again on Sunday. We are very, very grateful. And you make it sing. It's just marvellous. Thank you very much. There's, a, there's an ancient and beautiful tradition uh, that's observed at the Epiphany Mass. Uh, that is that chalk is blessed. And the marking of doors with blessed chalk demonstrates our willingness to offer shelter and hospitality to the Magi on their journey to the Christ child. This symbolizes our willingness to receive all who love or seek our Lord Jesus Christ. So the idea is that you take home a piece of chalk, which I'm about to bless, and on the altar at the back is a, a, an A5 piece of paper that gives you the prayer, you should say, as you mark on your lintel, the lintel of your main door and your back door, whatever door you fancy, there's a prayer that you say as you're doing it. And it goes like this. The three wise men, Caspar, Melchior and Balthazar, followed the star of God's son who became man 2,022 years ago. May Christ bless our home and remain with us throughout the new year. And I'm going to do it with the children of the parish at the end of Mass on Sunday. So we ask the Lord to bless this chalk and then we'll take it to the back so it's on the altar. Take a piece home, take a, a prayer card and do it. It's a sign of witness, is it not? Bless, O oh Lord God, this creature, chalk. And let it be a help to mankind. Grant that those who use it with faith in your most holy name and with it inscribe on the doors of their homes the names of your saints, Caspar, Melchior and Balthazar, may, through their merits and intercession, enjoy health in body and protection of soul. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So I'll ask Derek to go and take the chalk to the altar at the West End and help yourselves. Now, my friends, we stand for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. Christ our Lord, to whom kings bowed down in worship and offered gifts, reveal to you his glory and pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you to remain deep within you this night and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>